was in Hearsay that you met Jack Ryder, yeah. who was, of course, at the time, Jamie Mitchell in EastEnders, a huge, huge star. Yeah. Where did you first meet him? In the bar, which was weird because he didn't drink. <laughs> which, which bar are we talking it, about? Elstree. In the EastEnders bar? Yeah. So what are you doing there? Well, we were, used to film Top of the Pops there. Hmm. So we were there filming Top of the Pops. I think it was one of the last times they were going to film it there, actually, and we're singing our second single. So when, but when you met him, I mean, you were in a hot pop band and he is the big hot soap star. Mm. You see each other across a crowded bar. Yeah. What are you thinking? There's Jamie Mitchell off East End. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think you were a good match from the start? I th no, I thought we were very different. I thought we were very different. And in hindsight, I should have... Why were you different, do you think? Because he didn't drink. He didn't like to, to go out and socialise in that circle. Um, he was... Really into computer games, um, <laughs> which makes him sound like he's about twelve. So I'm sorry about that. Bloody <laughs> boy. <laughs> he was different. He was different. When did you decide to marry him? Or well, presumably he asked you, but what, what did, made did. you say yes? Uh, he was so different to anybody else that I'd ever met, and I thought maybe this was this was right. After you got married, I mean, you're solo career was actually very successful then it began mm. to be less successful mm. when you would when you were dropped by the record label what were you yeah. thinking then because that must have been for you a pretty big blow it wasn't a shock i knew it was coming but it was like a uh-oh because jack had decided to leave eastenders um, because he wanted to go off and do other things but they decided to kill jack off to kill his character off because they felt that was only, the only way that they could let jamie go because he was such a big character mm. Um, but then, obviously, when there's suddenly nobody bringing any income in, you then go, eek, what now? I wasn't scared of going back to before because I've lived that life and I've done it and I've lived fine and it was OK, and I'm, so I'm not scared of that. But at the same time, all the stuff I'd worked for was slipping through my fingers and suddenly I'm thinking, I'm going to have to take the kids back to that. Mm. That's not what I want, you know, what I wanted to do. Despite the setbacks, Kim, you are nothing if not a fighter. <laughs> Out of the limelight, Kim's star had faded and her marriage to Jack Ryder was in trouble. At that time, she didn't know what, whether to carry on and try and do something different. She just didn't know what was going to happen. But she just knew, I'm not happy. She needed something to reignite her career. And in 2007, Coronation Street bosses provided the perfect opportunity. She'd almost, probably certainly in, in, in my kind of awareness, just slipped slightly out of the, out of kind of big public awareness. Kim was initially offered just four episodes, but she was keen to impress Corey Chiefs. Casting Kim was a risk. Would they see her as, um, as Kim Marsh um, from Hearsay, or uh, well, would they buy her as a fictional character? In her first scene, what she was tested against experienced street veterans. On the first day, she was very nervous, really nervous. Follow that, as they say. Michelle, I'm not too late, am I? I just took one look at her and I couldn't believe how beautiful she was. Is nothing new. And so it worked for the character I play, Liz, to be really jealous of her. Absolutely a nervous wreck, sitting there at the edge of the seat waiting for it to start, you know. Ooh, she's coming on now, she's coming on now. Yeah, really, really nervous, but very proud. You see, look, it's Auntie Kim on Corrie. <laughs> yeah, sat with my kids watching that. My grandma was clapping and stuff. It was really funny. It was a bit weird seeing her on telly. I've never really done one of these before. I said to the directors and the writers, we should keep her, you know. She is great, she is great. They listened. Kim was offered a permanent role, and her mum was the first to get the news. Guess who's a clever girl? That's how she said it. And I went, what? She went, I've got Cory. Oh, I could not believe it. Jumping up and down and screaming, you know, so thrilled that she got this. Because, I mean, Coronation Street. Come on, it's the one, isn't it? <laughs> During her time on the street, she's had some cracking storylines. Oh, what are you doing? <laughs> Playing feisty <laughs> Michelle Connor. And, and with her career <laughs> firmly back on track, Kim's even had the confidence to strip off. 
She brings a sexuality to it without going over the top. And I think our show needs that. It's probably fair to say that quite a few people almost wanted her to fail. Her talent doesn't match her ambition kind of thing. They were all proved entirely wrong. <laughs> it's obviously been I mean, a life-changing thing for you, Corey. Getting a job like that and, and, and realising a dream you know, you're kind of walking to work every day, and I remember seeing, you know, Bill Roach walk past and I'm thinking, there's Ken Barlow. Oh, my God, there's <laughs> Ken Barlow. You know, it was like I was so starstruck in the beginning. Then I had Beverly Callard, who kind of come on board and went, oh, you'll be fine, we'll fit in, you'll be fine. And it's been fabulous, because everybody was so <laughs> welcoming and normal and warm, and that's why I loved the place so much. Are you all mates, or is it just too much hard work? I mean, do you all go out socialising together? Some of us, yeah, some of us. Who, I think who are your best mates in the, in the cast? Bev Callard mm. is a huge friend of mine. Um, she's wild, absolutely wild, but we have such a laugh. We're terrible as well. We can't, we can't do scenes sometimes for laughing, <laughs> and we get told off. But what do you like when you, you know, go on the Raz in Manchester or something? It gets messy. I bet it, <laughs> it gets messy You and Bev Callard, I can't even imagine. Yeah, we we'll rip it up sometimes. Me and Bev, Ali King. Oh, but well, don't move on yeah. too quickly. How messy? <laughs> What is a messy night with Bev and Ali? Five, six in the morning. Really? Strolling out of somewhere, yeah. Where are you strolling out of at six in the morning? The casino. Not really? gambling, just drinking. <laughs> you feel like yeah. you're joining an extended family. Yeah, it is like a family and we are quite protective of each other. And, you know, we've all got our own dressing rooms, but we choose to sit in the green room together which is always deadly because there's a kitchen full of crumpets. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we all pile weight on if we're into it. Is there a pressure as an actress, no. do you think, to I, I always look perfect? No, is what I will say, because I think, I think actresses come in all shapes and sizes depending on what part you're going for. You know, you can't all look clones of each other because it wouldn't work. You'd all be eligible for the same job. It'd be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Would you go down the full plastic surgery? Would you have a facelift? You, you know, you can't ever say... I, I will never say never. Because I don't want it to come and bite me on the bum. You know, you said you'd never do that. Well, in terms of how you are now, physically, you have had a little bit of help, haven't you? If you don't mind me. <laughs> exactly, can you mean? Well, let me spell it out for you. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I'm mistaken, your cleavage is slightly <laughs> more enhanced than it used to be. Really? <laughs> is it? Yes, no, it is. Yeah, of course. Are you, are you proud of your purchase? Oh, they're marvellous. <laughs> <laughs> Little fun bags they are. <laughs> I mean, without wishing to pry, obviously, but uh, <laughs> how much did they cost you? <laughs> are you thinking of getting some? <laughs> I got two for one. <laughs> um, Ten grand? Oh, no, much less than that. Really? Yeah, much Five? less than that. Five? Less than that. Three grand? A bit more than that. Two, <laughs> what, two like the price is right. <laughs> Coronation Street was clearly a, a career high for you, but privately your marriage to Jack was falling apart, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. What happened then? To be honest, we just... It was just one of those things we just weren't getting on, um, you know. And I... I'd, we'd had to move to Manchester and he was away from his family, etc., etc. And I think it was just a lot of pressure from jobs and, and, uh, and moving. And... Do you think either of you was more to blame than the other? I don't. I don't actually at all. But what I will say is that I was always portrayed as, oh, well, she's the older one. Mm. And she's the one with kids. And she's the one that's more kind of, you know, feisty and, and in your face. And so therefore, she must be the puppet master. She mm. must be telling him what to do and picking on him because he looked so angelic. And, you know, all I will say is that things aren't always as they seem on the outside. <laughs>